Now some comments on the web advertising. So the advertising market is very big. It's growing faster than traditional advertising. And um, it is still true, especially as we see in the mobile case, that advertising needs to redirect uh, some of its dollars from the uh, traditional mode, especially paper mode, to uh, the internet. Internet advertising has a lot of good issues of scale. Also, it's much easier to customize it if you have a paper advertisement. You can customize it a bit, and your version of the New York Times you distribute in Los Angeles can be different from the ver in advertising from the version in, in New York City. Uh, but it's still not super customized. Whereas you can actually customize the advertising on the web page to the individual user. Because you know if you're if you're browsing this, if you're logged into your Yahoo or Google or Bing account, they know who you are, they know the type of thing you do, and they can uh, use that fact in uh, generating the advertisement that will make you happy. In, of course, the other type of advertisements you get is if you do a search, there are so-called paid, paid responses. So um, those paid responses will tend to come back. In the case of Google, it tends to be on the right side of the page, with the main responses on the left. And uh, we can measure how, how much money we make, because we have a record of all the clicks, and whether those clicks ended, ended up in me buying anything. Here's a little plot from a recent uh, May 29, 2013 uh, Internet Trends talk. And this is on uh, the amount of um, uh, advertising versus media time. So we have here that. Um, 42% of the time is spent watching TV, and 43% of the advertisements money spent goes to TV. So that's pretty well balanced. Print is way off balance, only 6% of the of our estimate is that only 6% of the time people read print. But 23% of the advertising budget is going into that. Radio is actually under people, 14% um, of the time people listen to radio. This is maybe due to the growing importance of car radios and nice services for car radios with only 10% of the dollars there. And mobile is a huge under underserved area. So this is again the internet, but the internet access by smartphones. That's 12% of the consumer use, but only 3% of the advertising dollars. And here's a number here that um, currently internet advertising is 37 billion. Uh, and mobile advertising is 4 billion. And uh, you can see there's quite a lot of growth. Um, there's a $20 billion um, opportunity here for internet advertising, taking these to uh, um, trying to grow the, the advertising to the media use. It's worth noticing since it's in China, there is more access of material through the smartphone than there is through desktops. And so these numbers here are probably for, uh, you know, this is for the USA, and where still the desktop access is more than the smartphone access. So if we um, look at um, Typical page, this is a Yahoo page, not that, but you get similar things for Google and Microsoft. You have here your paid responses here, and uh, your featured one up the top here, and then here you have your unbiased ones here. And all of these things and these other suggested trial searches all have, all have to feed in the possibility of being biased by advertising dollars. You have to watch what these people do to you, because they're not really, the part they, they have to somehow balance making you happy, which is giving you exactly what you want, versus keeping their advertisers happy. And there's a trade-off there, because that's not obviously quite the same thing. And um, so again, you, you have a complex system. 
you click one page and then you go to another page, and when you go to that page, you carry with you where you came from and how you got there. And that can be used to optimize what's put on that page, especially if the page you start from and the page you got to are actually owned by the same company. It can do an extremely good job of customizing what it gives you. So that's um, a very important area of, uh, of uh, development in the in this in this type of um, activity. There are so-called display ads, which I must admit I don't like. They keep popping up and annoying me. I mean, that's a well, that's a true of course advertisers anyway. In general, I find internet advertising less annoying than TV advertising, because in TV advertising you have to you have to switch off your mind whenever the ad comes up. Whereas in um, internet advertising, you just have to redirect your eye. Uh, but display ads tend to pop up and use a large area and Difficult to switch them off. That's probably why they they um, actually are uh, probably cost more money and are popular with advertisers. So there are various types of um, ads. There are guaranteed delivery, which guarantees a certain number of, um, of activity, or non-guaranteed deliver with. Um, um, which you do not guarantee that your, your actual display will be shown. It will depend on what the people want, whether that uh, your, your, your banner gets shown. So we have various um, um, models for payment for the, essentially the cost per, per t time the ad is generated. The cost per clip, click, namely then you only pay when your ad is clicked by somebody. And the, and the other thing is when you not only click, but when I click on the um, BMW ad and I buy a BMW, then I get then the then the person who put that initial ad in gets paid presumably a lot of money because they probably made quite a bit. So, but if the same thing is true for toothpaste as well, then there's not so much money involved. Uh, so computational advertising is a pretty interesting area, and there are all sorts of issues of as I've already really discussed. We have a we have a, some conflicting goals because this is an example of an optimization problem, where we have different goals from the advertiser, the publisher, and then you that's who or Google or Bing or eBay or Amazon, the user, and the ad agency, which is the broker. Um, so we need to, or, or you could say that's the um, ad agency is essentially the Google search engine. Um, but that, that I would say is really the publisher. Because the publisher, like often you would have a, a Google search engine would be on a Google page. If Google search engine was on a different person's page, then these would be distinct. So we have all sorts of uh, this is a multi-objective function optimization problem. You can weight these in different ways and try to try things out. And remember the A-B testing we can do and all this thing. We discussed that for Netflix. But we can have all sorts of different algorithms and keep trying them out on subsets of the populace and see which ones actually work. Mainly because we have to trade these things off against each other. Often in a giant optimization problem, you just put various coefficients in front of the measure of the happiness or the financial value of these particular components, and then just trade off those size of those components. Uh, the long tail, we've already actually mentioned long tail in other contexts. Uh, and we noted that one of the interesting features of e-commerce is it actually helps the long tail. Because with traditional commerce, it tends to be hard to sell things that uh, aren't sold very often. But on Amazon, because of the way it works, it can actually bring the long tail to people. Because it can suggest things in a rather, without a lot of cost. And it can run through the long tail as it gets as its suggestions. And due to the ranking method, that ranking method works in the long tail, because the long tail allows you to take the high ranking of a long tail item and then that long that high ranking gets inherited 
by the people, the users, say, who are near that particular person that ranked that item highly. So long tail is an important concept which is actually sort of invigorated by internet. And uh, we say we did discuss uh, this type of thing when we were doing recommender systems and uh, collaborative filtering, as I mentioned verbally before, is very important algorithm for long tail economics. And um, these are examples of uh, things which I may not have thought of, but they're suggested by by the um, collaborative filtering algorithm because the users I'm near also look for these types of things.